Guys, as you mentioned, the star player for the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers is none other than Josh Endress. He leads the, the conference and is fourth in the nation, as you mentioned, averaging 138 rushing yards per game. He has 3,131 career rushing yards, only needs 20 here this afternoon to break the Dakota Wesleyan career record. On top of that, he's 192 yards away from a single season record with two games left to go in the season. He's second in the career list all time for Dakota Wesleyan scoring and is fifth in the nation in all purpose yards per game. We should have a great matchup between the second ranked rush defense of the Prairie Wolves and the offensive juggernaut of Endress here today. Let's head downstairs, check in with Brandon. Brandon? Guys, Josh Endress is not the only offensive weapon this Dakota Wesleyan team has. Quarterback John Bain has thrown for six, just under 1,700 yards coming into this game, and he's also a couple records just shy, including a total offensive record and a passing record. He only needs 158 yards passing and only 324 more yards total offense to be the Tigers' all-time leader in those categories. Watch out for him as well. And with more about that, here's Brandon. Guys, as you mentioned, Mitchell, South Dakota is the home of the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers. They are crazy about the corn. The high school mascots are the Colonels. Their radio call station letters are K-O-R-N. We have a quiz question for you about the Corn Palace. Do you know what year that the Corn Palace was first built? Jeff Motes, Lucas Mormon, Brandon Aximet, and our entire 21 sports crew. And we head down to Brandon, who's got an injury update for us. Brandon? Guys, as you saw earlier in that first quarter, a player went down for Dakota Wesleyan, and that was Jeff Mason. I was watching him. He got carted off the field, and he has since left Able Stadium. An ambulance pulled up in the parking lot. He had the air cast on, and they took him away. They couldn't give him enough medical assistance here. It didn't look too serious. They didn't have the flashing lights or anything, but we all hope the best for him. As you mentioned, he's one of the three leading tacklers. He's definitely going to be missed on the Tigers' defense. Our third member of the broadcast team today is Brandon Exumit, and he's standing by with more. Brandon? We have a perfect day for the 51st meeting between these two schools. It started all the way back in 1958. Nebraska Wesleyan leads the series 32-18, to and it's good news that they're playing at home if you're a Wesleyan fan. The Prairie Wolves are 18-5 and when playing in Lincoln. The last time the Bulldogs have won here, all the way back in 2002. Let's head down to the sidelines and check in with Brandon. Hey, thanks, guys. If you're an NFL fan like I am, you have noticed over this past month a lot of pink in the football field. It has made its way all the way to the NAIA and the GPAC Conference. There's Wesleyan players with pink headbands, bandanas, socks, and even the cheerleaders have pink pom-poms, and they're wearing bands in support of breast cancer awareness. It's good to see you guys. Let's check in with Brandon once again. Brandon? This Concordia team had a slow start to the season, losing its first three matches. This since rattled off four straight wins, and they're averaging 35.5 points a game. They've been held well below their average by the Prairie Wolves here with just six. In theory, they're only supposed to be set for 12. We'll have to see if the Prairie Wolves defense can hold or this Bulldogs team leads the charge in this second half. Let's check in again with Brandon Axman. Guys, over the past few games, the coaching staff and Prairie Wolf defense is putting a big emphasis on turnovers. The last two games, the Prairie Wolves have got a total of 10. And as you just saw a few plays ago, Eiler with his second interception of the game. So they're definitely focusing on getting those turnovers. And not only are they focusing, but they're succeeding in trying to get what they want. And that's 12 turnovers in the last three games. Back down to Brandon for more. Brandon? Hey, Jeff and Lucas. We talked about at the start of this second half that it's... Bulldog offense averages 35 and a half points a game. They've only been held under 20 points once all season, and that was 17 points in last week's win. So it appears that the Prairie Wolves are going to hold the Bulldogs to the lowest scoring total of the entire season at six points. And when you do that, you got to think you're going to win a lot of games. Let's head down to the field. Let's check in with Brandon. He's got Coach Keller standing by. Brandon? Hey, I'm with Coach Brian Keller right now coming off a big win, just snapping a four-game winning streak by a great Concordia team. They came off a big win last week beating a ranked opponent. What do you do coming into a game like this, and how do you game plan for this sort of result? Well, you know, we've been playing really well ourselves, and we took uh, Northwestern to overtime, and so we've been playing, uh, I think, extremely well ourselves, and we just, uh, just had uh, lost some close games, and now uh, it's turning our way. Can you talk a little bit, a bit about the quarterback, Tyler Francis, and his second start already tied a completions record. What type of player is he? Is he kind of a bright future coming up for the Prairie Wolves for a couple of years? Well, I didn't realize that. How many completions did he have? I think they said I heard 28 over the loudspeakers. Okay. okay, well, very good. Yeah, no, Tyler's got a great arm in that. He's still just learning our offense. You know, he's new to our program, just came in in the spring, and he's got a great group of receivers there, and guys gave him time, so there should be some great things that are happening. And I think I was looking at the stats, the Bulldogs' lowest scoring total before this game was 17 points. You held them to six. 
You had a great defensive effort by Cody Eiler with three interceptions. Can you just kind of talk about the mindset? Because you had ten interceptions in the previous two games. You've been really focusing on that. Cody Eiler seems like a great player for you as well. Well, when you talk about Nebraska Western, uh, you talk about defense, and that's the first thing that comes to mind. That's something we've always prided ourselves on, even way back when I played here. So it's been going on a long time. But great defense. Cody is an extremely gifted player and just made some huge plays, and that's what you want from a, a captain and a senior. Hey, Coach, thank you so much for the time. appreciate it. Appreciate 21 being here. Thank you.